Welcome back to Tech Talk with my old buddy uh, Adam Oldfield from FPM3 and I'm Greg DeRocher, President and CEO of the Cambridge Chamber of Commerce. And you know, whenever we talk about Galaxy or Samsung, there's always news around the band. They're always doing something innovative. Yeah. But what's this Bixby voice? You know, this is this is kind of weird. I mean, we launched the S8 and the S8 Plus probably three months ago, yeah. okay, give or take. And the funny thing is there's this button on these phones, which, by the way, if you own it, you're probably like, what does it do? It doesn't do anything right now. Well, the key thing is they just announced literally two weeks, you can now upgrade your phone and that button will activate the voice recognition of Galaxy's Bixby. Bixby is their voice activated, kind of the Siri version of, oh, of, of okay. Samsung. So, and it's quite amazing. So you can actually tell this thing in real plain English anything you want and it will actually do it. So schedule an appointment with Greg DeRocher to film Tech Talk, 3 p.m. and it puts it all in. It's quite advanced. Whereas Siri goes, I don't know what you're looking for. Let me go to Wikipedia and search that for you. I mean, it's like, no, I don't want to Google it. I want to schedule an appointment. So, you know, wow. uh, and Google Assistant's okay. It's getting better. Yeah. But Bixby's finally available for the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. And the Note 8 is coming out August 23rd. They're announcing it uh, and we can expect to I see. I know, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of excited about that because you know, usually you could go on right now, and yep. I've tried, Googled, you know, and there's mm -hmm. all kinds of innuendos. There's nothing that seems to be, oh, this is it. Here's what it's going to be. Right. So it's all rumor and conjecture. So is. Uh, Samsung is not releasing anything about the Note 8. This has got to be the best tight-lipped version. I mean, everyone that's announcing all the leaks and all the, yeah, the yeah. samples and renderings and everything else, you know what's great about where we are in smartphones? Is we're not changing too much of what they look like. Right. So every yeah. rendering you're looking at, you're kind of going, still yeah. looks like a square. Yeah. So <laughs> they've talked about some ideas that they're going to be launching with it. The only thing I can guarantee about what we can expect with the Note 8 is it's going to come out with a stylus, mm -hmm. which is going to be extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be very much ramped up with their but new... The, but that's... that's famous for Note fans. That's why they use the Note. That's why Adam uses it. I'm a no <laughs> I am a huge you know that. I, I had know. a Note 2 to a Note 3. Yeah. I skipped 4, went to 5, I went to 7, it exploded, went back to 5. <laughs> so now I'm waiting for 8. So I'm just kind of like sitting in the wings watching all these amazing phones right. on the and market. It, and it's the stylus that it, the size plus the stylus. The stylus is amazing. For those that are power users in business, I can't live without it. And that's yeah. why I need it. I mean, I thought about going to the iPhone 7 and the challenge I have with it is that I I use the stylus so much. Yeah. As an example, I quickly pop out the pen, I write uh, uh, on, my, on my notepad a quick action thought. I also will look at an image or I'll look, this is a feature of Galaxy, is that I can highlight and take a, a, a caption of an image and, and Galaxy will say, oh, that's text. Would you like to extract that? I go, yes, and then I can put it in an email. So I don't have to type anything out. I have to. Oh, wow. So the Samsung Pen has so many amazing, cool features, yeah. and it really is more or less an advanced version of sort of a press down. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they have multi-touch when it comes to iPhone. Mm -hmm. So the Note 8 is coming out, and I am super thrilled. The only thing guaranteed, I can tell you, it's going to be the most expensive smartphone <laughs> on the market. And I'm not kidding. Fifteen hundred bucks is what they're claiming will be retail. Starting. Oh, then it's got to be like. It's got to be amazing. I mean, it's going to self drive because, because <laughs> that's not that's not Samsung's mantra. No, they're, they're not out no. there pumping out really expensive phones just to try and set the stage and say this is just a really expensive phone. When you whatever you buy with Samsung, you get the, the full value of it. This is what makes me wonder if there's going to be some really hidden secrets up yeah. this phones. They're making the announcement. I can guarantee you on our tech talk, I'll be raving about all these amazing things. But we will have to wait until. Let, I'm going to contact your friends and my friends, and <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see if we can't get one right here on display uh, uh, before it's even out. Well. You make that happen, <laughs> I'll be bowing to the well, mighty it might be the day. Well, it might be the day <laughs> out, but say, yeah. let, let's see if we can do that because I, I think you're right. Uh, they had such a boondoggle with the Note 7. Yep. Uh, they have to do something that's amazing and incredible uh, to bring those customers back again, and I think it's going to be the Note 8. Absolutely. I'm no looking forward to it. it. How about uh, traveling? We talk a lot about NAFTA and going across hmm. the borders. And as you well know, I was down in uh, Tucson this year with my colleagues in the United States. We did a, a tour of the border in Nogales, <laughs> um, uh, uh, United States. We didn't go to the Mexican side. But, but you're telling me now that there's some technology features that 
mm -hmm. countries are adopting to, to play havoc a little bit with your cross-border shopping? You know, issues? the U.S. has basically announced that it's going to, for any Canadian flying, not so much driving, but mm -hmm. flying, if you're flying to, uh, from Canada to the United States mm -hmm. or Mexico, from yeah. Mexico to the United States, get ready to get to the airport a little earlier. So they've always said international flights, you need to be there three hours in advance. Mm -hmm. I'm recommending you get there four to five hours in advance. Really? They're claiming now with the new rules they passed, and God bless the Trump administration, uh, is that they're going to be able to go through all your electronic devices. They cannot be on your carry-on. They have to be separated. And we have to also get ready to start giving up your passwords. Not only to your laptop or your tablet or your phone, you have to also give up your passwords for your social media, for your email and they have a right to go through it. And if you don't like it, you don't get to go to the States. Wow. So you need a lots of timing. When they pass these new rules, when they go through all this process, one of the things they like to do is they check everybody at first. Right. So this just passed in the last month. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little crazy right now at the airports mm -hmm. until things get a little more settled. They'll probably start off with everybody. Then mm. they'll sort of go down to random selection and then they'll probably go into specifics. If they feel there's a question, you look nervous, you're sweating when you look at the guy yeah, or yeah. whatever. So you remember the days they used to swab your hand? Everybody got swabbed. Yep. Now it's random selection. This, this will be the same. I would thing. recommend everybody go and get their nexus because I just yes. went through, went down to Nashville and back again. Um, they actually made me put all of my electronic devices in the bag, yep. Yep. not outside the bag. And, uh, and I walked through with my wallet in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to empty your pockets just of change and, right. and any metal. But uh, I, I, it's, it's certainly worth looking at, even if you're only doing that once a year trip that you go down to the States or, or wherever, you know, for 50 bucks and going through a little bit of a hassle, it's not a big deal. And, and it can save you a little bit of time too. Lots of time. You Absolutely. Know, no question about it. Now, this is the funniest one ever. Okay. What's this deal about reading the fine print? Well, which, which, of course, everybody does. Oh, absolutely. I mean, no we one, all do. No one signed into iTunes no, without reading all no, 75 pages. I read pages it all. Of it. Absolutely. And I, yes. s I do. I mean, I find it <laughs> thrilling. I mean, I, I had a choice of watching a Marvel movie or what? I read terms and conditions. <laughs> Like nothing says fun like terms and conditions with a bowl of popcorn. Exactly. So this is the new thing is we know no one's doing it. That agree button or scroll quickly well, to get Well, apparently to the they found one guy does. Well, you know, they did this test down in New York and what yep. they had was a free Wi-Fi from a company named Purple and their test was truly to do this, to prove nobody's reading it. <laughs> so in the small print, they actually have terms and conditions that basically said the following. You will have to hug a stray cat, a stray dog. You will have to clean public toilets at festivals and events. You will have to do a assisting with cleaning all nail clippings that anyone shall clean. <laughs> I mean, it was ongoing. One gentleman went through and made saw this note and kind of went, I got to clean a toilet to get internet? <laughs> wrote them and said, hey, this is unethical. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> anyway, you got $1,000 for saying, thank you for reading the fine print. And by the way, 22,000 people accepted these terms and conditions to get their internet. No. Which claimed specifically that they were going to be cleaning public community toilets for the rights of and using And they were internet. willing to clean, apparently. Nobody had any clue. No one had a clue, which was the point they were getting at. Because, yes. you know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to clean nail clippings. I'm just, hey, that's me. <laughs> you can keep your Wi-Fi. I'll, I'll pay Rogers and Bell for the data. I don't give a damn. <laughs> but anyway, the point of this moral story is that, folks, read the terms and conditions. Exactly. I mean, we spoke about this before with Facebook. Mm -hmm. You don't realize. I had this argument with uh, a client who said, the, and there's, this is famous, the gentleman goes to New York City. He takes photos from Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. blows it up, and does this huge art deal where it's your photo of puppies and muffies and buffies yeah. and busters, and they put it on display. And these are your private photos that you maybe shared with your family and friends. He takes them, he blows it up, and sells them for thousands and thousands of dollars. People sell their photo, try to argue and sue the gallery, sue him, but... Sorry. Public domain. Public the domain. minute you put it on Facebook, your terms and condition releases the rights of your ownership, not only to Facebook, but to anyone who has access or visually can access them. Yeah, it's so amazing. It is, I say this all the time, when you're putting your private photos up or you are a, ma I see photography, beautiful photos of people going, oh, look at the sunset over the bay or, you know, they're getting a photo of yeah. a beautiful, you know, the, uh, the Grand River and, the, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, that was my work, my talent, my <laughs> skill. Well, guess what, folks? 
That's how someone can capitalize you know what, on your though? talent. They, there's no excuse for it because everybody's got their phone in front of their face anyway. So they, they may as well read something constructive, <laughs> which would be the fine print, wouldn't you think? Well, I was going to say, you get to usually paragraph two where the policy includes a... Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. All I want is the video game. Exactly. Give me the video game. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, the burning impatience. through. Impatience. We're an impatient society. <laughs> exactly. Because of those darn things, we're impatient. Uh, you could be cleaning uh, toenail yeah. clippings and cleaning community toilets well, next you time go. you get your free don't, Wi-Fi. Don't click the ask until you read it. That's for <laughs> that's sure. Right. One right. thing you can be guaranteed, there's no fine print with us two. <laughs> you get it right from right from the horse's mouth, and that's, that's right. all there is to it. So, exactly. ladies and gentlemen, check back with us again for another edition of Tech Talk with Adam Oldfield from FPM3 and me from the Cambridge Chamber of Commerce. Thanks very much.